Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. When is enough really enough? Some might ask. Whenever we've had enough, will be the answer. Women in politics, a system rigged against women. For too long, women have been excluded, discriminated, marginalized, underrepresented in our government, in the policies, in our programs. And we are so tired of this exclusion. I ran to become a member of the House of Representatives, um, Nigeria Lower House of Parliament in 2019 elections under the APC platform. And to describe my experience, <laughs> it would be the entire hour of this advocacy and I will not have done justice to it. Now, wow. That encounter is in part a reflection of common cultural stereotypes that challenge women and their roles in politics. This in addition to other barriers such as lack of finance, religious beliefs, violence and weak internal party democracy have held women back for several decades. Despite being a patriarchal society, Nigeria has a rich history of women breaking out of the mold to participate in politics. I'm talking about our pre-colonial history and women, um, the exploits of Queen Amina of Zaria, who led armies to drive out invaders from Zaria and um, Moremi of Ileife, whose sacrifice to our people speaks to selfless leadership that we are so bereft of these days. And our recent um, um, past speaks of prominent women, women like Fumila Ransom Kuti, I'm sure you all know Fela's mother, late Fela, a crusader and challenger of uh, despotic leaders who led Egba women on a protest against taxation. Margaret Echo, a prominent civil rights activist, and Hadjia Gambo Sawaba, who championed the cause of the oppressed in northern Nigeria. Iyalo De Tinubu of Lagos exemplifies the rich participation of women in our economic scene. Now, the legacies of these women are really now at risk of extinction today. Since 1999, when Nigeria returned to democratic governance following um, years of military rule. No one has even been elected as president, ha, vice president, or even governor of any of the country's 36 states. In Nigeria, women have been playing subordinate roles and have not even been given any independent um, role in political um, acting. Even though women constitute about 49% of Nigeria's um, 200 million strong population, only seven out of 109 senators are women. Imagine in the House of uh, Reps where we have 360 members, only 22 of these members are female. So in, in all of this, we recognize that our existential gap in the national policy on women, they formulated a policy in 2000 and later replaced by the national gender policy in 2006, which calls for affirmative action for the greater inclusion of women in politics. Yet despite these key measures, progress has been really slow. Even the gender and equal opportunity bill aiming to tackle the forms of discrimination against women and con consequently promote gender equality in politics, education and employment, marriage and inheritance it has been stalled till today since 2010. No bill has been passed. So at the end of July in 2018, about 150 aspiring women politicians from different parts of Nigeria flocked to Abuja for some women's aspirants summit. And the goal was to combine forces to ensure women are duly represented across all levels of government 
And for the first time in Nigeria's history, six women actually ran for president compared to the last election in 2015 when Professor Ra I'm sure you all remember, Remy Sunaya was the only female who was the presidential candidate. And obviously, because of all this awareness, the numbers increased sig significantly across board for women to be elected in office, yet the results were still abysmal. As you see, I still did here. I wasn't even given tickets. Anyways, we, we countries like Senegal, um, Rwanda, South Africa, <laughs> which have quotas for women in parliament, we've seen a rise in the number of women um, lawmakers. Actually, in Ethiopia, Abi Ahmed decided, she's the prime minister, to reserve half of our ministerial um, positions for women. Now, when you use quotas, it actually jumpstarts the equality process and it begins um, to bring something of a change in, in this um, field. We all recently witnessed the um, Bruhaha and showdown in the, as um, Chuka, we called them, Nadem Dem Commission, aka NDDC, where the former acting MD, um, Joy Nunez, accused the current minister of the Niger Delta, Godswill Akpavio, of impropriety and um, sexual harassment. And he replied and retorted that our previous four husbands and therefore poor temperament and bad character should be consulted. How does the personal attack here address the concerns she raised? When does a man get asked how many wives or how many sexual partners he has as, a, as his resume or competency to do a job that he was hired for? And what is this double standard? My advocacy, therefore, is for the federal government to establish a constitutional, constitutionally backed quota system that will tackle the gender imbalance problem in Nigerian politics. I want political parties to have a compulsory quota reserved for women and also encourage women in politics to create a platform where experienced female politicians can offer mentorship to young female politicians and also offer them insights, you know, to how to, to do their elections and be successful, um, well, I call them elected members in, and make a good campaign. This is my advocacy. So if I could Over uh, to you. start the conversation here. Um, I agree in principle with the idea of some sort of uh, quota reserve for, for women, because as we know, women are half of the population and they're extremely underrepresented in the political equation. My, my reservation, though, is twofold. My reservation, my reservation is not about the idea of a quota system in itself, but it's twofold, and I'll explain what I mean. So using an example from the continent first, I, uh, you mentioned, uh, I think it was... Uh, Ethiopia? Rwanda. Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a very interesting example because I believe that the, number, the proportion of women in the parliament is 50-50, so 50% male. something but yeah. Now, the funny thing about that is that when a woman did to run against Paul Kagame in the last Rwandan presidential election, her name was Victoria Ingabire, she was thrown into prison and her nude photos were leaked. So yeah. it's, it's important to, to understand that there are certain African leaders like, Paul, like uh, the Rwandan guy, uh, Kagame, like the Ethiopian guy, Abi Ahmed, they're very good at using women to do PR optics. for themselves. It's for optics. It's not necessarily, they're not necessarily part of the power structure at all. It's just they're, they're figureheads, they're puppets. Mm, Gaddafi, the, so it's very important to keep that in mind. Well. So a quota doesn't necessarily solve, solve that, that problem. Mm. And secondly, from a Nigerian point of view, what I'm scared of is how we use quotas in Nigeria. Yeah. Now, an example of a quota that is successful is the affirmative action system in the US, which basically states that of every of uh, a number of qualified candidates, there's a reserved quota for a specific group of people. But everybody there is qualified, first of all. If you're not qualified, whether, whether you're in that group yeah. of people or not, you're not going to be included. Yeah. In Nigeria, what we do is completely different. Yes. We say even if a goat <laughs> is from a group of people, is from a particular <laughs> reserved group, and that yeah. fits the quota, we put that goat in. So what I'm, afraid, what I'm afraid could happen here is that you create a quota system for female politicians, and that will just simply ensure that the very worst of them end up Maybe dominating. That's, <laughs> okay, Libra, that's, go for that's, clapping to that say is, something. See, hey. David, that's just ice the cake, because it's the same thing they do when they say 
you know, youth in politics. Okay. You know, you look for the worst youth. amongst the youths, yeah. and then you say, well, you are looking for young people. Take, this is the young this people. The young so you're looking for women. Oh, yes, don't worry, we'll give you women. women yes. And so you bring the worst amongst them, and then if it is about, look, the first and foremost, it should be about, you know, qualification. Okay. For you to get there, whether male or female, you must be qualified. There is a process that we all must pass through. And then for that process, 60% for this, 40% for this, or 50% for women, qualified women, 40% for qualified men. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you know that the women we know that, okay, yes, we have 40%, and it must be amongst the ones that are qualified. Mm -hmm. So a Professor Shonaya, for example, will, the women supporting her will not be looking at their shoulders. And then you'll find that the women that will support her will be the qualified one also mm. to say, yes, this is one of the best amongst us. Mm. But when it's just, oh, filling the quota, mm -hmm. most of the women also will tell her, typical of Nigeria, oh, look, you don't have the, the numbers. And, and so we need to make concerted efforts mm. and not just say, Oh, we need more women in politics. If it's about more women in politics, you're going to have them. No, I mean, again, they, uh, they will uh, give them to you. I but probably have to agree with Libros and uh, David. Um, but really, I also to agree with you because it will jumpstart the process. Yeah. There's no doubt because it's yeah. so tipped in the. I mean, the figures you gave are just. It's a shame. Yeah. But I would say that in the same way, because I've done an advocacy on this before, that women, the right women are not. There's a deficit. There's also a deficit of the right men. We just have the wrong kind of people in politics. So we need to make the system more, ena no, no. more enabling for everybody. No. But then I also look at the recent incident. Um, what state was it? Where, um, what's her name? Salome Acheju was burned to death in her house, a female representative. And yeah. then you also have this other lady, Natasha Akboti, who was bullied out of her own campaign. And what was done about that? So I, I, we still want to see, for those who are even brave enough to stick their neck out, what kind of an enabling environment are we providing for these women? And, and, but I'm very behind your forming a platform. I've even encouraged people like Remy Shonaya. I'm behind any woman that can now form a platform. I will get on that platform with you. You too, my well, sister. qualified or Form a platform. Let's women. go and let's get, we have the numbers. Let's women, go women grassroots. Party. Let's um, empower the right women to go ahead of us. We time. desperately yeah. need that representation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I think we should still have the, the what do you call it? The, um, the quota. The quota system, mm -hmm. yes. It doesn't matter that it's flawed. Let, let's just start Everything there. in Nigeria is flawed. So mm -hmm. let's still have a system. Yeah, to serve the some purpose. The system is correct. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the whatever is flawed, the execution mm -hmm. is flawed. It's like having a constitution, but we're not doing anything yeah. about the constitution. Oh. Uh, sorry, I just also want to add, the, the 2018 bill I read, can you believe that the people there who stopped it from going, some of the reasons they were quoting was I was anti-Sharia law, because one of the things they would do is to insist Colors that a girl, or the Bible, or whatever they were quoting, that a girl could not get married before the age of 18. And so a lot of times they're safeguarding their own selfish interests. They're not really representing us. We need more people there who are representing us. All those Why men should there, the girl they're not representing be married us. in any case? An 18-year-old has no business being in a marriage. There you, but some people say, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I don't say my own. Uh, anyway. Well, well, sir. well, Rookie has certainly had enough, and so have we. Up next, I'll be addressing another enduring practice, for better or worse.